This is World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. Today is Chinese Brands Day. The first exposition on China's indigenous brands is underway in Shanghai. The theme of the expo, China Brand, World Sharing. About 500 well-known brands are setting up shops at the expo that exhibits the history of Chinese brands and their prospects. More than 800 participants from around the world are on hand too to take a serious look at China's brand development. A big push for brands is technological innovation and at the heart of it is AI or artificial intelligence. The business world has jumped on the bandwagon with many of them from China. How well are Chinese brands? Surfing the tide of AI, can they be a leader in the field? Baidu, for example, the Chinese search giant, doubled down on AI as the core of their strategy, especially on autonomous driving cars and voice recognition. Earlier, I sat down with Zhang Yaqin, the president of Baidu. Before we go to the interview, we'll take a look at this. Artificial intelligence is changing the world, China's speed. That's how Baidu, the nation's largest search engine, describes its AI ambition. The company launched its autopilot vehicle, Apollo 2.0. The car can drive itself on barrier-less city roads. Currently, Baidu has devoted a lot of resources to autonomous driving and voice recognition, and developed autonomous driving platform Apollo and conversational AI platform Doer OS. Zhang Yaqin, the Baidu president, said the company is now entering a new era of AI and China can lead in technology and R&D together with the U.S. It commits 15 percent of its revenue to research and development and has grown rapidly in China. It now has more than 2,000 people in its AI group. China State Council announced an AI development plan stating that China will become the most advanced AI innovation center in the world before 2030. Can Baidu really take China's unparalleled scale advantage to dominate the global AI market? Particularly about the artificial intelligence, yes. that is uh, quite a field that the world is thinking about. Yes. Ethical issues, legal issues, that's what people are talking about. Right. Yeah, you know, on one side, people are excited about uh, the opportunities mm. that AI creates. Uh, and also people uh, are uh, concerned about all the issues that uh, come with that. You know, for example, you know, possible loss of jobs uh, yeah. and, uh, and also misuse of uh, uh, the capability and, and the data. Uh, but you know, overall, you know, AI is uh, the most uh, significant transformative mm. force of our time. Uh, it really elevates uh, our experience, user experiences right. for our products. Uh, it you know, significantly changes the traditional, in traditional industry, yeah. but also it creates new categories. It has a, a you know, significant, a profound uh, social economic value. Well, at the same time, the yeah. competition right. for artificial intelligence right. inside China is getting ever more severe. Right. You know better than I do right. about right. this, right. Uh, right. Dr. Zhang. Yeah. So tell me exactly uh -huh. what are we looking at? Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, when a, a significant opportunity comes, a new industry, uh, you know, arrives uh, that uh, you know, competition is uh, normal. Mm -hmm. uh, the heightened competition means it is real and means uh, there are tremendous opportunities. Uh, I think it's uh, healthy, it's a good thing. If you look at uh, in China, uh, essentially all the big internet companies are transforming into AI BAT companies. Are, you are having right, intense competition. Yeah, which, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> and also you, you see startups, yeah. uh, you know, the ventures are beginning to uh, do really well in some verticals. But, but when you uh, say it's a good competition, the question is what is your advantage? What are the advantages of the others? How do you distinguish yourself? Or there's going to be, you know, ruthless mm -hmm. kinds of competition. Right. Well, you know, uh, we are very fortunate uh, in the sense we started uh, investing in machine learning AI much, much earlier than everybody else. Uh, so we uh, had a lot of great talents. We accumulated a number of technologies. And also, you know, through a search and other services, we're able to accumulate a large amount of uh, data. Mm -hmm. So we have essentially in you know, the talent, technology, data, and uh, uh, scenarios, applications. So right now, you know, I'm very happy to see that we are ahead of everybody else in China, and also we are in the frontier of uh, you know, AI worldwide. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you know, if, if you look at a ton of striving, the technology and the platform uh, we've been developing, it's really gained a tremendous momentum, not only within China, but also uh, in, in, in the globe. What kind, of what kind of time frame are we looking at, Dr. Zhang, mm -hmm. when no, it comes to driverless cars, for yeah, example? Yeah. yeah, it actually you know, happens uh, faster than most people uh, think. Mm -hmm. in, because uh, of the open platform, Apollo, we released, it actually accelerates uh, the uh, innovation and also commercialization of uh, uh, level three and uh, level four. Uh, obviously, we don't manufacture cars, so we work with uh, you know, car makers and they will put this uh, in the marketplace. Now we see countries around the world are all jumping into this big area of artificial yes. intelligence. Yes. Talents is the thing. Yes. So, okay, China could use money cash mm -hmm. to attract talents. Mm -hmm. China could use data mm -hmm. to attract talent. Mm -hmm. But what is the ultimate thing that you think China could be mm -hmm. attractive to international talents? Mm -hmm. uh, it's the opportunity. You know, when uh, you are trying to attract and uh, nurture uh, talents, return mm -hmm. talents, the number one thing is uh, you know, I, for, for the time they spend in your company. Yes. What are the difference I can make? It's uh, not about money, it's not uh, about a you know, certain position, it's really about the things, uh, the difference you can make, the opportunities you can create. I think China right now has uh, uh, so many different applications, scenarios, uh, and, and also people are very open-minded mm -hmm. to uh, you know, embracing new things. Yeah, Right. For example, autonomous driving. Right. According to a survey, 92% uh, of uh, the Chinese uh, consumers say, wow, if, you, if this happens, I'd love to try it. I'd love to, uh, <laughs> to use that service. Try the new thing. Yeah, in uh, India, it's about 70%. Americans, about 52%. European, 45%. <laughs> So you know, the Chinese consumers are uh, very open-minded, enthusiastic for new things, which creates uh, a you know, big market opportunity. Mm -hmm. And what about the competition also uh, among the so-called tech giants? Mm -hmm. uh, there are, on the one hand, people talk about these giants having too much monopoly power. Mm -hmm. In China, you also have the BAT, right. B included with Baidu. Right. Uh, Overseas, you see, you know, Google, Facebook. These right. companies also have so big a voice right. in the decision-making process and also in the market. So, what about the monopoly issue from a business person? Mm -hmm. How do you articulate that? Yeah. Well, in fact, I just came out of uh, a, a session. Okay. Uh, that's you know, kind of big. Fresh power. out of the oven. That's right. <laughs> big power, uh, big impact. Uh, I actually want to add a big responsibility. Right? In indeed, you know, for the uh, first time in history. Uh, the top five most valuable companies are uh, all internet companies, yes. the big five. Uh, yeah, and you know, China also, uh, if you look at the uh, four of the top ten company, tech companies uh, in the world are from China. So indeed, uh, there are a lot of uh, impact. And as uh, uh, a big company, you know, yeah. we do have to be responsible for the things we do uh, and do good to society. was my talk earlier with Zhang Yaqing, the president of Baidu. Another Chinese tech brand, iFly Tech, is also getting very popular in recent years here in China. It is specializing in voice-based internet and mobile products such as phone apps for simultaneous multilingual translation, voice input, and Siri-like intelligent personal assistant programs. I went into the showroom of iFly Tech, even though you could also find showroom of similar type in many parts of China, just to give some example, not just for a discussion, but to check out the latest tech applications and gears related to them. First of all, let me show you our translation applications. Okay. Basically, it can support many languages by your voice. So we, we can try Chinese to English stuff. Go ahead. I want to invite you to see a film today. This is our smart home solution. Mm -hmm. Imagine you are sitting in a home. And on the couch? On the couch. At home? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the purifier is on. That's quite cool. 
earlier you demonstrated quite a number of technologies that you have been using and also make it really available in a very massive market. Your company is very young. So we just treat it very preciously because we can feel the wave of popularity of the terms speech. Maybe some of the company just cannot survive uh, because of the vision or some of the uh, actions um, may be harmful for the for the company. Mm -hmm. But for our uh, company, we think we've got our vision. We think uh, definitely speech is the user in the uh, ultimate uh, user interface mm -hmm. in, in the future. But we have to survive, right? In 2004, we, we got break even. But how we do that, we have to do some uh, system integration things to make us uh, survive. And then we put all the profits into the R&D. Mm -hmm. That's to make the, the wheels going on. And of course, the Chinese market is enormous. We see the benefits of that demonstrated, let's just say, by WeChat, for example, which is now going everywhere. With this kind of application advantages in the Chinese market, you do have certain competitive edge. But on the other hand, how much can you really maintain by only following and observing what the others are doing and therefore ap apply it to the Chinese market. <laughs> you know, in China, domestically, we have to face BAT, I mean, to be frank. But uh, we think we are differentiating. We were the startup company 10 years or 15 years ago. But we have to wait about 15 years now. Everybody think speech conversational interface is coming because of the AI technology. So mm, now, and Many, many companies think AI is the hotspot, so everybody proposed their right. <laughs> concept <laughs> with the AI things will make them more advanced yeah. or make them popular. I mean, but we are still solid. Uh, we are very confident in what we are doing. So for those companies, we think they are a surfing company. So like surfing the wave. What about your international competition? Uh, we think Amazon, Google is doing great and we, we are learning the creating the ecosystem mm -hmm. and doing very detailed and uh, user-friendly uh, interface and solutions for the end users. And also, we know Chinese better. So that's why we're learning from them. On the other hand, we want to go globally. Mm -hmm. But how we can do that? So we think Belt and Road Initiative is one of the choice. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Everybody say Belt and Road Initiative I is a solution. No. But, but, but how exactly that's going to happen? From our perspective, we think language is the barrier to communicate. So we can provide the language support towards that. We are very good at speech technology. Mm -hmm. So uh, for example, we are having our multinational uh, voice cloud in Xinjiang to provide the language support uh, among the Western, Western Asian area. So uh, it will help to increase social activities and also the economic aspects mm -hmm. in that area. And after the Western Asia, we, we can have more joint lab with the Middle East and also the East Europe mm -hmm. so that we can deliver more and more capabilities towards the language translation things. I think the significance of doing this is not only for um, supporting the initiative, but also for us to find a way to be in a step of the globalization. Mm. This is one thing. The second point is we establish our cooperation in the state to maintain the highest level of scientific research. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we are trying some uh, uh, subsidiaries uh, operating locally in certain territory, mm. like Japan, like Singapore. Where Advantages, disadvantages compared to some of your international competitors? Well, um, firstly, I think the US um, or the multinational companies are pretty good at scientific research and also the engineering technologies. But in China, we think our innovation is more related to client needs and also increasing efficiency. So we think if Chinese companies can focus more on the innovation dri driven by applications, that will give us more advantages compared to other multinationals. What do you make of the future, where is it going to be? AI plus, because human have their own lifestyle and also they have their jobs. And they also have to 
have services from the society. So that divided into two sub-concepts. One is AI plus lifestyle, and the other one is AI plus vertical industries. Mm -hmm. So you will need a better assistant in education, a good, good teacher, uh, or you will have a better uh, health care. And also you may need a better lawyer. So in the future, that will be the market and also the future of our mission. Uh, this is one thing. The other one thing is that when you are home, when you are studying, or, or when you are driving, so that's your personal life. So we, we also have to uh, have the mission to change the way of human interaction with uh, machines. How far are we talking about here? Uh, now we are talking about 10 years. So we have already been made many progresses in the vertical industries. Mm -hmm. And after the, after the increase of the hotspot of the AI, and the technology is going to be better than ever. Well, that is all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us World Inside CGTN into your search engine or check out our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Sina Weibo from Mi Tianwei and everyone on the World Inside team. Thanks for watching and tune in again next time for insights across China and around the world. Good night.